So everybody, it's been a long time, but we're finally getting back to it. It's me and Terra, and we're continuing Suzerain. Uh, yes, for the first time in, like, what, six, seven months, something? About seven months, I know. We kind of had to put it on the side because of my working schedule, but, you know, we've got back in contact properly again, and we want to continue the campaign. It's the, it's, it's the only thing, it's only the done thing. You know, it has to be yeah. done. Uh, so here we are, opening up the papers and trying to remember what voices we were using. And, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> and where, we, where, we, <laughs> where, we, where we were. Um, and here we are, opening up the papers, trying to familiarize ourselves as to what was going on. Um, it's probably going to be a big turn, actually, uh, as we've got a trial of democracy going on, it would seem. Uh, police have arrested the principal of the high school in Rebel in southern Bergia uh, where 12 students died after eating a free meal laced with pesticide oh jeez uh, students aged 15 to 17 died after eating a lunch of local dish of Zabra cooked at the school in a poverty stricken city Police have started the investigation to solve the mystery of how the pesticide ended up in the food. Jesus, yeah, this is a good start. Okay. Welcome back. Let's kill some kids. Lovely. Um, in the radical, we have... Oh. Do you want to read the radical? As you're very much a radicalist yourself, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Sweden is known for being radical. Okay, so time for women to stand up. The women in Sordon have always been under pressure by the unequal society and the system of discrimination that was built by old men who knew only who only knew about war, said Katharina Horton in a women's rally that was held in Holzord yesterday. Swedish League of Women is organizing a number of rallies across Sordon to bring the change Sordon desperately needs. Uh. It is time for Sordon to realize that we have to respect every individual, regardless of their sex, and strive to become an advanced civilization. Women have long been pushed to the corners of their social and political life. Mm. To address this change, a new campaign was started all over Sordon to establish a framework for women's rights. Swedish League of Women is organizing rallies with the support from Minister of Education Clara Volda. Mm -hmm. That's a name we haven't encountered before. I don't remember her, but I'm sure we'll get acquainted with her in times, uh, times to come. Yeah, okay. And member of the assembly, Katarina Horten. Hmm. Everybody is equal according to the Swedish constitution. But there are no protection against discrimination, which only reinforces the inequity, inequality in practice, said Walla in a press conference. This movement must be supported by all Swedish women as well as men. We need to bring change now. We can do it! Question in Solist Education. Okay. What's this one all about, Tara? Uh, oh, it's about the newly unveiled uh, Cyber Education Performance uh, Report unveiled a sad reality about Solist's abysmal state in comparison to many countries. Yeah, that's a good header. Okay. Solar was rated 39th out of the 68 nations that resembled, uh, assessed by the OMEG organizations organization okay so pretty much in the middle almost it's almost like they're trying to rig the test scores by poisoning and killing off the students <laughs> <laughs> get rid of the well, ones because it, it was in that poor district it might be the underachievers so they were kind of getting rid of the ones that were dragging down the uh, average score of the tests it could have been you never know and uh, what a conspiracy theory that would be. I mean, outrageously so, but... Uh, holy well, shit. killing kids is never a good way to go <laughs> in my eyes. But I guess we'll have to wait not, and see. Not even the if they're just a little bit of a shit. Says. 
the primary gauge of the quality of education is made from a sample of 16 year olds from each nation and their capacity in fields like mathematics, history, chemistry, and many others. One of the key issues was seen as a strong focus on history and citizenship classes, leaving little time for scientific fields. Minister Walda often mentioned the gaps in the system in her assembly debates before she joined the cabinet. This is also supported by one of our editors, a professor from Holzworth State, who has long been critical of the situation in secondary education. The SIPA report reveals the damning truth that solace education, based on the principles of statism, nationalism, republicanism, poisons the bright minds of our children. We need to rid the system from the poison that is ideological indoctrination and let our future generations think for themselves. Uh, I, agree. I, I, I agree with that one. In, in principle, maybe, but I mean, at the same time, you know, there's nothing wrong with being proud about your own nation or being, in a, or being a Republican because, you know, we are kind of trying to support a yeah, but, public, yeah, but, you know, not, not yeah. like uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah but I'm, what I'm referring to is getting rid of the poison of ideological yes, indoctrination. That's right. And let future generations think for themselves. That's what we need to focus on. That's true. Uh, the Economist. Okay. As the top economy experts in the country, we have been watching the upcoming changes in the government budget very closely. President Anton Rain's first internal economic challenge lies ahead and we will see if he can prove his capabilities as a leader who can think ahead. The potential ramifications of diverting the funding to, uh, of, yeah, to certain governmental branches has always been a point of contention for any leader and it is no different for this case. We will see if President Rain can hold on to the promises he has given during the election campaign. Can you remember the promises? <laughs> Honestly, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to rewatch some of these videos. Um, on Tuesday morning, Agnolia's Prime Minister, Van, uh, Mr. Van Horten, has made a statement denouncing Valgsland for the missing vessel hull number Okay, so we've had a, a, a missing ship go somewhere. Our dutiful coasts have, coast guards rather, have rescued a number of the crew of the missing vessel. Uh, through the, his statement, we had learnt that the ship's unfortunate end was none other than the Vagslandian Navy. Okay, however, the Prime Minister has refused to discuss the surviving crew member to fear of an assassination attempt from Valslands to cover up their hostility as the minister like, okay. Valsland, where is Valsland? Uh okay. Agnolia and Valsland, so uh, okay. I think we're kind of friendly with with these guys, right? A merchant uh, nation. I think. Yeah, okay, oh. good relations. introverts and kind of neutral okay okay so major naval power right fair enough this kind of I, th I think I remember there was some sort of naval conflict between those two countries weren't there I think so I think so um, where do we want to start shall we go uh, let's go from north to south. Okay. Uh, so no, nothing. Nothing uh, over here. Seen. Well, in that case, then we're just going to go from left to right. <laughs> Start here. Uh, lack of hospitals. Okay. The Mayo Knobs reported that their hospitals are overburdened and they are unable to respond to the needs of citizens. He complained about months-long waiting lists for terminally ill patients. Wow. Hmm. Sounds like the NHS. <laughs> yeah. 
On top of the capacity issues, it was also noted that the facilities are still largely using outdated technology. Okay. Down in sauna. Blue dish resistance in sanctuaries, right? Are they still at it? Yeah, uh, they are. Okay, blue dish resistance in sanctuaries. Mm -hmm. Security units have arrested three priests. Three priests, okay? At uh, two different. Uh. Nudity? Okay. Nudity sanctuaries in Zarna after finding links to insurgent activities. The report g came from an elderly man who wanted to pray in peace, but instead found himself invited to join the British Freedom Front by a state-sanctioned priest. Further incidents indicate that the BFF is pushing for a local recruitment drive in different sanctuaries across the region. Oh dear, religious fundamentalism. <laughs> okay. That's not good. Uh, young swords and the NFP flags burned. Oh God, what is what is this place? <laughs> I, I'm getting a six winds vibe. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, a massive counter protest against young swords led by a local politician known to be aligned with the Red Youth resulted in many injuries and property damage. Subsequently, Young Swords and National Front Party flags were burned, which caused tensions to escalate. Local police dispersed the protests by sundown. Okay. I think the Young Swords were kind of quite nationalistic, right? Uh, uh, Right-wing nationalist political organization. With a goat for a, <laughs> for a symbol. For a second there, actually, it probably looked like a, like a scorpion. <laughs> Let's have a look. Communist books burnt in Berlin. Local residents gather thousands of books that they claim to be spreading communist and malen... Malenivist? Malenivist. Wow. Yeah. Propaganda in Central Park in Boren and the books set on fire. Uh, communist theory is advocated by... Okay. Kantan. Okay. Uh, aggressive slogans targeting the Red Youth, the Workers' Party of Bolivia, and the Communist Party of Swartland were shouted. Young groups from the local party offices of the USP and NFP also joined in with the burning. The fire department was dispatched and the protests dispersed on their own. Okay, so some people are burning books, some people are burn burning flags, everyone's burning. That's yeah, fine. I'm kind of worried about the priest in the sanctuary, so... Uh, even a priest can uh, carry out espionage and stuff, you know. Hell, I mean, true. Uh, that is true. But I mean, in sanctuaries and having, I mean, I mean the sanctuary is supposed to be free of all that kind of crap, isn't it? Kind of, but I mean, there was a plan in Britain when the Nazis invaded that uh, local resistance groups would pretty much operate from the church <laughs> I think <laughs> okay well there's a difference between a resistance group and in this case recruitment to drive for a hardcore uh, organization oh no we've got a recession hitting farmers again okay <laughs> As per the latest news from Lackhaven, the farming industry has taken another hit as a result of the recession. There are reports that 16% of all the Lackhaven is rotting in barns due to the lack of buyers. Oh, damn. Farmers are requesting additional funds from the government to survive the year. Damn. Well... <laughs> Well, if we can't feed our people, that's going to be Well, no, I mean, we, 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 we can. We can we, I mean, we're overproducing. If you've got 16% of your stock just sitting there rotting, then there's no demand for it. Yeah, because of the, the recession, no one has the money to buy it. I guess. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, barbecue. barbecue with Frank. Do you like barbecues, Terra? I like barbecues. Let's go. 
It was a Saturday afternoon, my first break from work in what felt like years, and the weather couldn't have been more perfect. Trying to keep my mind off the upheaval sparked by the circus assassination, I lit the backyard grill. Okay, Monica and Dina were out shopping for craft supplies, and I'd given the staff the day off. It was just myself and Frank. Who is Frank? So my, oh, that's our son. That's, yeah, okay. And I think Monica is our wife and Diana is our yeah. daughter, or the other way around. I wasn't sure how he felt about me at the moment, but I did know how he felt about barbecued ribs. Yes, the way to a man's heart, or even a teenager's, is through food. Feed him, mm -hmm. and he will never... Okay, I'll cook. I'd left some marinade in the fr okay. We well, didn't even he didn't even prepare it himself. That's terrible. Sure enough, <laughs> as soon as Frank glimpsed the grill and the meat, he stepped outside to join me. There we go. Which one should we go um, for? Um, number one seems kind of sarcastic. Yeah. Number two feels more homely. Let's do that. Sure, if I can spare a few minutes out of your busy schedule. Oh dear. Oh dear, he, he feels neglected. Uh, okay, so not number one. Uh, uh, I would say number three sounds like a good compromise. Yeah. Because number one and two feels too work-oriented. Number two feels too work-oriented, and number one feels like, well, you should be happy, this is what I give you kind of thing. I'm the president, goddammit. Yeah, basically, so I'll say number three. Okay. It's okay. I know you've got the most stressful job in the country, and you've got to feed your family on top of it all, okay? We both chuckled and tended the fire. Yeah, let me try. He's going to set himself a fire, isn't he? <laughs> okay. Turn to look at me with a grin on his face, as if... He was expecting praise. That'll do, pig. That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta watch that movie sometime again. <laughs> uh, okay, so good job. Not bad, son. Not bad. Don't act like you've done something special, Frank. I would say either one or two. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll go for number two. You know, let's not make, him, in, let's not make him into a py pyromaniac. You know? Yeah, and, and also having the word son in it kind of still feels bonding yeah. kind of thing. Thank you, sir. It is in our utmost interest to fulfill our duties with precision. The grilling shall commence in exactly <laughs> 1 minute and 32 seconds. Okay. That was a spot of an impersonation of Lucian. We looked at each other for a second, <laughs> then burst out laughing. That's That's our little chief of staff, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I realized that my throat was parched. There was a six-pack of beer in the kitchen. Oh, dear. Are we going to turn him into a into an alcoholic? Why don't you bring us a couple of beers? Hang on, how old is he? Yes. Uh, well, he's in high school, so... Yeah, well... I mean, he is drinking at home, meaning we can keep an eye on him. Yeah, I suppose. So yeah, drink, drink, drinking a beer at is... home is a lot more safer than drinking out with friends on town. That's true, but yeah, one sip, and that's all that's all you need, and then you become an alcoholic. But yeah, okay, we'll go for a couple Wait, 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 are you that lightweight? No, I never said I was a lightweight. I, I, I can get through... It sounded like you spoke from experience. No. One sip is all it takes. <laughs> Well, you know, some people are uh, predispositioned to their genes to become an alcoholic. But, uh, but yeah, that okay. Is true. That is true. Alcoholic parents usually, unfortunately, brings that to their children. Not always, but often. Okay. Why don't you bring us a couple of beers? There we go. You looked at me in disbelief. Uh oh. Uh oh. But mom told me. He stopped himself, quickly ran inside, and returned to two beers. There we go. Cut them open, clinked the bottles, and gazed at the city skyline. For a moment, my thoughts flashed back to my childhood. 
and my relationship with my own father. My father was a poor man who struggled to provide for, uh, for us on his meagre in income. He put me to work on the farm long before I was Frank's age, and even then we couldn't always make ends meet. Yet we were always close as a family. Okay. Now that I was the president, I knew Frank would never face the same hardships I had. I couldn't deny that I felt a bit jealous. Can I ask you something, Dad? He asks. Hmm. We are family. You can ask anything. I know, that's, that's very cheesy. Go on. Out with it, man. Okay, oh, one, one or two, they're, they're basically the same, the same yeah. thing. I feel like there's so much you've been hiding from me about your past and about what's going on right now. Like a dinner that night after the ball, you told me everything was under control, but it wasn't, was it? Okay, well, he's becoming a, he's, his own man. He's not, he's not stupid. I think we have to be honest with him. Mm -hmm. Honest with anyone in the family. Yeah. Specifically. I know what happened in the 20s. We learned all about it in school. Now, with the protests and the riots, is it going to be the same thing? Dad, is this where we're going to be in a civil war? In, oh, is there going to be a civil war in Swordland? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I mean, what do you say to that? I mean, you can reassure him, but at the same time, you go, well, I hope not. <laughs> That's what I'm trying well, to avoid. <laughs> well, let's think back at all the news we read in this session and all the things that we can remember from our past sessions. It is Something is growing, and it's growing fast. Hmm. Uh, no matter what we do, we seem to get bitten in the ass anyways. Yeah. But I do think that in, since we're starting to bond, we should, and as we both agreed, we should be honest. But the situation feels, to me at least, quite volatile. With our northern neighbors rattling their, their sabers and everything else, so... I will probably be honest and say I hope not. Yeah, I was thinking that too. You let out a sigh. But what was it like back then? Uncle Peter says the two of you went through a lot. I'm not a kid anymore. You can tell me. Before I could gather my thoughts, the familiar images started flashing before my eyes. Images of soldiers advancing towards me and my friends, weapons drawn people I knew, friends and neighbours being dragged through the streets and murders, murdered in alleyways, oh dear. The shock and grief on the force, faces of fathers, mothers and orphan children. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If we're going to go on us, we're going to go on us all the way. That's right. It seems like it, yeah. Uh, I would say let's talk about it. Yeah. Why not? He leaned forward in his chairs, eyes wide open. Okay. Uh, well, he wants to know about the war, right? So let's tell him about the war. It was right after I met your mother. How I met your mother at yeah. that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had both joined the same political debate group to push for change after the coup of 27. But over the next year, the state of Swordland deteriorated. People started picking sides, and I tried to stay away as much as I could. Okay, and then the clash. Then one night it happens. Two different factions in the army, one of them led by the fascist General Luderin, and the other by the socialist General Ricard, started fighting against each other. It was a bloodbath. Nowhere was safe. Frank shifted his seat visibly uncomfortable. People organized protests either f for or against Ricard. I heard about the clashes the next day. Many of my friends were shot or arrested. I isolated myself for months. Um, I guess going yeah. on. I was barely uh, older. Oh, so we, should, so we should have started with the 27 because... Uh, perhaps. 
Yeah. Let, 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 let's just tell the story backwards then. <laughs> yeah. I was barely older than where you are now, uh, studying economics at the Latcaven Business School. I was a freshman, excited and young. I had just left the coup. Yeah, okay. Yada, yada, yada. Some soldiers were supposed to protect sword and citizens pointed out their guns at us. Okay. They immediately took control of the facilities, as, as one does in a civil conflict. Kept listening. That shot. Look on his face. Uh, we we can tell him. You know, we can be honest yeah. with him. If you want to hear about it, he yeah. needs to hear about all of it. I was there with the protesters as they declared martial law. We marched towards them. They threatened us uh, to use force, but we stood our ground. So they started beating anyone they saw, including me. The physical wounds took a few weeks to heal. But the mental scars have stayed me with, with me to this day. I was lucky. I stayed strong. Uh, that's... I'd say if, if we're going to try and be a father figure to him, we stayed strong. Hmm. But I can't remember. Were we lucky or did we actually pull through on our own? I can't remember. I can't remember either. Tried my best to stay strong. Some of my friends were shot. Many more were arrested. But I'm proud not to have faltered. His shoulders slumped heavily. That's enough for today. <laughs> okay. It's okay. I'm sorry I shouldn't have asked you about it. Okay, well, maybe he feels sad about hearing it, but at least we told him the truth. The truth is very important, especially within the family. Indeed. One more thing, though. I know that you managed to not take any sides. Do you mind if I ask why? Oh, okay. Jeez. Uh, I would say... Ooh, hmm. I didn't want to Let's be part see. of the violence. So, uh... Yes, I do mind. I don't want to talk about it. No, oh, we're skipping that one. I didn't want to be part of the violence, or there are two sides of the same coin. Uh... Yeah, fascism Ooh. and communism tend tend to be um, just as brutal as one another, I suppose. Um, yeah, and they both were uh, they, bo they were both fighting to take uh, take charge of the country. Yeah. So they were in since the country is the coin. Yeah. And <clears throat> communism on one side being the heads or, or tails. Yeah. And fascists on the other side, so I would I would say they're two sides of the same coin. I, I would say so, yeah. He raised his eyes, eyebrows. His curiosity is still not satisfied, but sensing my reluctance to go on, he simply nodded. Sorry for bombarding you with questions. I know I complain sometimes, but my problems are nothing compared to what you went through. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're damn right. Your generation will never understand. Yeah. Um, I'm here to listen to them no matter what they are. Yeah. Before Frank could say anything else, I heard the front door unlock. Deanna and Monica's voices and the sounds of rusting shopping bags filled the house. Oh, of course. I'll be upstairs until dinner. No, you silly bastard. you got to stay near the fire. <sighs> I took a long sip up from my beer, looking at the city, and now the setting sun. I hoped that talking to Frank about my past had been the right decision. Part of me felt as if some sort of burden had been lifted. Well, that's kind of good. Mm -hmm. But I had the same nightmares again that night. <laughs> we move forward again. Okay, the news. <sighs> okay. The whole sword post. Oh uh -huh. god. Attacker opened fire on protesters. 17 dead. A man opened fire in Vessel City Center during the protest march organized by the Communist Party of Sword of against the murder of Bernard Service. Is something going on about that? <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. I mean, sure. I'm sad he died, but. Yeah. Shit happens. He used a military-grade yeah, machine gun. Okay, so I, I, we had weapons coming in from 
the south somewhere, right? Yeah. Uh, hmm. Which is suspected to be part of the invest inventory of the Swordish Armed Forces. Hmm. Okay. The attacker killed himself right after shooting at 25 people, killing six... Okay, so he was the 17th victim. Then. He took out the weapon from the newsstand at the square, brandishing it and yelled, Come, I will give you freedom, one witness said. The highly charged word freedom was previously associated with British separatists, but had been used widely during the previous months of protests against the murder of Barrow Circus. Minister of the Interior, Lilius Graf, said that she had spoken to the chief of vessel police and asked him to take strict action. The government will not tolerate any such incident and the perpetrators will not be spared, she said. Lovely. The Lackhaven ah. Times. One of the most anticipated matches between Gelsord and Anrika was postponed because of the intense protests in the city of Anrika, the League has issued the following statement regarding the situation. Due to safety reasons, the players are compromised during this time of trouble. We have decided to postpone the game. Moreover, we stand in solidarity with the fans, our players and the people of Anrika in the fight against injustice. Mayor Curtin Lest. Imagine, imagine having your first name as Curtin. <laughs> it could be worse. It could be Dormat. It could be. <laughs> It is a tragic day of Swordland, where the president himself refuses to act in the face of communism. It is... well, hang on, we haven't even had a chance to act. It is said uh -huh. to, that inaction breeds doubt and fear. Thus, I fear that the spread of communism has sown deeper inside the heart of the nation that, than we thought. However, I and the people of Anrika will never stop fighting for the soul of our great country. Okay. So, Gensort and Anarchy, where are those cities located? Okay. Uh, Gelsland and Greater Holsord. So, Holsord. Anrika's there and Gelsord is there. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, right. We've got one more in the news the Radicals. The radical. Undemocratic elections of Sweden. Oh, here we fucking go. Sweden had an electoral threshold of 10%. This means any political parties that are under 10% of the vote can't even enter the assembly. This is the very reason why the United Sweden Party holds 52% of the seats in the assembly today. It is also the reason why the largest ethnic minority of Sweden is non existent in Swedish politics. Hmm. The last elections have shown that the pro British WPB has an enormous voter base of just above 9%. But it still failed to meet the 10% threshold and couldn't enter politics. Similarly, similarly the CPS has won around 8% of the general vote but was eliminated. This means that millions of votes are not represented in our current government. Hmm. Or over this has benefited the USP the most and gave them the lawmaking power. Okay. The undemocratic threshold needs to be lowered down needs to be lowered down so that there is a true representation in the assembly and a true representation of our voices. No one can call sort of a democracy without a decrease or a constitutional proposal that does not include such a change. Democratic. Interesting. Uh, mm. Okay, so we've got an explanation mark there. Uh, let's have a look at the news here. Prisoners, prisoners riot. Okay, in Antel well, Rock Prison. Well, they're already in prison, so I guess that's something. Yeah. Yesterday, around 11 a.m., a prison riot started in Ward C of the Antel Rock Prison, which was eventually suppressed. Ward C is generally used for keeping political prisoners, of course. And the riot started when a warden was killed oh. by a British political prisoner. Okay, four guards and 21 prisoners died. 134 were injured. Jesus. Lovely. Um, no, <laughs> not in any way. <laughs> Holy hell. Okay. 
Mona industrial output concerns. Oh, God. Right, okay. The mayor of Mona has reported that their industrial output numbers this year are 12% lower than last year. They are requesting additional support to improve their industrial capacity, including machinery and personnel to combat the downward trend. With the construction of several new factories in Warner, the mayor stated his belief that an economic upturn in the city is still possible if government investments succeed. According to current projections, Mourner is set to lose an additional 2% of its industrial output next year. However, recent data from the municipality suggests that investment worth several billions of uh, swordish, whatever they're called, will stop the downward trend. Yeah. And increase the industrial output in a short amount of time. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure we'll probably be given a choice between industrialization or farming. <laughs> uh, farming, definitely. Well, wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, we have one uh, final small yeah. city on the Yellow Arrow. Many okay. members of the USP, led by Albin Clavin and the reformist wing of the party, clarified their demands from the government in the party congress. For the upcoming constitutional reform, Albin Clavin stated that without ministerial reforms, they won't be able to stand behind the new reform package. Right, okay. Well, this is, this is where we have to do some actions here, Terra. Mm-hmm. And remember what the hell we were doing in the first place. Presidential visit to Narble. Right. I was traveling to the snow-covered city of Narble in the Nargis region, region for the Rural Development Forum organized by the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education. The mountainous city of Narble had gritty tones to it. It's mostly regarded as one of the poorest cities in Swordland. Its people were hard, hardy and wary. Okay. Even after the discovery of natural resources in the area, years of neglect by the central government were apparent on the buildings and the general infrastructure. Natural resources, namely gas and oil, were now under the control of Gassum which elevated the corporation to a place of power. Right. Lovely. I can't help reading that as Gazprom, the real-life Russian uh, <laughs> gas company. Hmm. My task in this forum was mainly symbolic. Fake smiles and handshakes with oil barons meeting with local politicians, but mostly importantly of all, to make sure that Marble does not feel like it was forgotten by the government. The scenery so far, however, was a reflection of Narble's neglect. Main roads to the city were not maintained well. Ah, there were many bumps and empty, discoloured spots in the asphalt. Navigating and swerving to avoid the inconveniences, our motorcade finally started nearing the city. As if my discomfort from the bumpy ride was apparent to him, Serge rolled down the partition window. And the, the, yeah, he was like, kind of, hello, Mr. President, wasn't he? <laughs> I believe he was, yeah. Yes. We will be arriving at the Hotel West in a few minutes, sir. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Okay. Uh, yeah, first one. <laughs> anytime. It is my duty. Okay, after a moment, Sergei started to smile under his moustache. So uh, I'm just asking how that uh, is. <laughs> He'll be like, I'm just... Yeah, I, either, either one or two. Yeah. Sir, I just want to say, it's been great these last two months. As you know, my wife Susan recently gave birth to our son. Oh, look at that. So, ah, congratulations. Um, ah, cool. And now my daughter just started at a very good school in Holsort. Well, that's nice. Uh, 
Yeah, definitely number two. Yeah. I appreciate it, sir. Truly, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to afford a good private school if she scored less in the entrance exams. Okay. But I shouldn't have made my insecurity get to me. Erica outsmarts me all the time. I'm very proud to have a daughter like her. Oh dear. Hopefully she doesn't go to a school where they're serving rat poison. That would be... <laughs> <laughs> well, we are in that city right now, aren't we? Uh, perhaps. Uh, uh, number one, I would say. Yeah. Because number two is basically telling our driver that he's dumb. Yeah. I'm sure she will, sir. After all, she is the daughter of a lion and a lioness. Oh, look at you. My daughter looks up to the First Lady for inspiration, and it's not just limited to my daughters, sir. She is an inspiration for almost all women in the country. Oh, look at that. But at the same time, it must be hard for the First Lady as well. All this attention, adjusting to a new high-profile life and a husband that has great responsibility. But no power. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I would say either three or four. It must be, sir. Sometimes we sometimes forget the important people in life between all the responsibility and rush. You know, those we care for. Uh, I agree. There we go. Yeah. Serge continued after a moment of silence. Have I told you, sir? We named my son George. The doctors said he is very healthy, and thankfully so is my wife. Uh, I, hmm, I think I'll go number three, since we don't know much about his personal life, do I we? I guess not, yeah. What kind of person is she? She has a good heart. Her family comes from Sana, so they are a little more traditional. I really like her selflessness. Uh, okay, so Sona is a nice little city. Selflessness is a respectable trait to have. Monica is persevering. It can be inspiring at times to have a partner like that. Uh, well, since we're focusing on him, him and his family, I would say number two. Yeah, you're right. It should be mutual. That is what matters most. Sergei sighed. I already started thinking about their university education, especially Erica. I want to send her to a good private school, but with the current state of the economy, it's going to be hard for us. Yeah, we'll fix the uh, economy. Uh, yeah. One way or another. If anyone can, that's you, Mr. President. A car hit a major pothole and a bump which lift, lifted us up off our seats for a second. Uh, Are you fine? Invest in infrastructure. We have the budget to do it, but we were kind of... Yeah, but right now we're in a personal conversation. <clears throat> so I'm thinking maybe we should continue keeping it personal, and then as we get back to, uh, well, our office, I guess, we can yeah. start focusing on what needs to be done. Shall we ask him if he's okay? Yeah. I hope the car is fine too. The motorcade began approaching the hotel. The Hotel West was supposedly the best hotel in Narble. The large 25-story main building was undoubtedly one of the taller and more expensive buildings in the city. It towered over the nearby slums and had been a target for protests when it was first built. The crowd had gathered in front of the hotel with the welcoming committee at its center. As we approached the red carpeted entrance, I could see the mayor of Narble and his top aides. Sergei got out of the car and opened the door. He bowed his head respectfully and gestured towards the entrance. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. 
Mr. President. Yeah, that was it, wasn't it? <laughs> as soon as I left the vehicle, the fresh air of Narval filled my lungs. Almost immediately, everyone pre present in the crowd flocked over to me with an excessive display of courtesy, smiles and handshakes while I donned the mask of a politician. A mask that was very... I was very used to, okay? And... Okay, well the highway's gone up. And we've got more news, okay? No major decisions yet though, but we'll go from right to left. Young Swords right. suspected of terror attack. Oh, for uh, fuck, give it. God damn it. <laughs> At approximately 6, uh, 446 on Monday, a terror attack occurred in the Best Swords city and uh, center during a rally by the left wing CPS. The attacker, suspected to be working with Young Swords or another organization connected to them, opened fire with an automatic rifle. On the protesters, first a machine gun and now an automatic rifle. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Seventeen people were killed, including the attacker who shot himself afterwards. Witnesses testify that the rifle was hidden behind a newsstand again. Wow. Our local police are now wary of this tactic, and all newsstands will be inspected by the police before and during crowded rallies. Further investigation on young swords are underway. Well, then, at least they piece the pieces together. Okay, let's check the new stance. Yeah. Okay. The whole sword post. As protests continue nationwide, tension eases in some cities. Still, several major cities, including Dyer and Lackhaven, did have some scattered reports of violence on Monday night. Tens of thousands in Dyer, Circus's hometown, walked in a memorial march through. Though, although police moved in on the thinning crowd as the evening settled, making arrests. Oh, okay. Authorities said demonstrators began throwing rocks and ignored orders to disperse. The protests <sighs> in Hulsord and in most other major cities appeared calmer, with fewer clashes between civilian and police. Authorities have made at least. 9,800 arrests related to the protests according to a tally from the state press. Jesus. That is quite a lot of arrests. Okay. You can read the radical. There's three, okay. three lovely pieces of information in the radical. <laughs> okay, so shocking misogynistic rally. <clears throat> Every day we are appalled by how deep the roots of misogyny goes in our country. We are appalled against when yesterday, during a protest by the Swordish League of Women, counter-protesters showed up to disrupt the peaceful rally. In the resulting scuffle between the police, the protesters, and the mob, many were arrested from both sides. Road to change is filled with real obstacles, but we said it before. We can do it! Lovely. Saul needs to answer for his crimes. Looking at the history of everything wrong in our country, there is only one figure that everything points at, Tarkin Saul. He has devoted our country, devolved our country into something much worse than what it was before. He has committed crimes against humanity. We are all still remember, uh, we all still remember the Ism incident and the wounds that have been inflicted on the hundreds of thousands of people with British ethnic background. Ism incident? What's that? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, bloody protest in '33. One of the foundation movements of blue. Uh, okay. The three, the Salt Dam project, we proposed a long term solution, but it turns out of it. Went on for 10 days. There are construction workers, protests. Okay. Someone was killed by the military by the looks of things in a protest. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. I only got ha halfway through. Uh, we have been calling for his trial, and we believe it is time that this government opens the way for fair trial by removing the undemocratic and absurd laws to protect him. It is time that a constitution of 29, the protest soul can. The pro that protects. Soul be, cha be changed. Hmm. 
People are still waiting for a fair trial, for justice to be served, and for their questions to be answered. Okay. Uh, labor Union Rights of March. A large group of Labor Union members gather around the city of Valgen to protect and protest against the poor condition of worker rights in Sordon. People could be seen holding signs, pleading for accountability and basic rights in corporate work environments. Dozens of Taurus workers were in the midst of the crowd. One worker was heard saying, I know the law gives us nothing on paper. This is a reality we choose to accept. Others, others pointed out that the country is relying on the workers to stop the recession, but doesn't give them anything back. Look at how great the rights are in Valaxland. Minimum wage, overtime pay, and safe work reg reg regulations. The time for re-workers reform is now, one voice demanded with frustration. We had the opportunity to interview some open-minded managers from corporations. They relayed that the companies have little to no oversight. It's hard to disagree that the time for labor reform is long due. Alden, Cla Alden Clavin from the reformist wing of the USP has seen the potential and announced that work has begun to explore what can be achieved. Will President Rain listen to the demands? Time will tell. I see. Okay. And the Economist. Education, privatization proven successful. Our editorial team immediately analyzed the SEPA report recently revealed to assess the standards of education. We were curious to see how the policies of the last decade had begun changing the performance metrics. Lesbia specifically stood out with a jump of six positions forward to fifth out of 68. Well, that's not so bad. Mm -hmm. After re research and analysis collaboration with the vice president of Magnus Cartus and the SEMA chapter leader of OMEC, we gained critical insights into how Lesbia increased its education quality. So, yeah. Interesting. It boils down to two major points. One is the privatization efforts led by Prime Minister Alvarez that led to the most schools in wealthier neighborhoods. 1,404 to be precise to be privatized I mean I don't I don't know if I kind of like the idea of privatized schools to be honest this lifted a significant budget burden off the state because the wealthy paid for a great education for their kids and were still taxed reasonably in order to divert funds to state schools elsewhere the second major factor was the allowance of minor curricular changes for private institutions that led to major improvements in the student participation, teacher happiness, and boosted the performance of the institutions. All in all, the improvements to the system and the massive amounts of 34 billion lira it raised for Lesbia made a lucrative, make it a lucrative option. Swordland desperately needs more capital to tackle the recession and when education is privatized foreign capital will also aid in establishing quality schools vice president of magnus cartus pointed out that the sepa report doesn't include access to education metrics and that lesbia has inequality problems the statement that hasn't been proven with any statistical research from the OMEC, which is why it must be taken with a pinch of salt. The Rain administration could be practical about this uh, and look to the southern example on how to do positive change, even though opposition from the Minister of Education is expected. Right. I don't. I don't think we're going to go private ed education because that is going to bring a gap in society, and also a private school. We don't know what they're going to teach teach the children. Well, I mean, it, it said that you know you have you have to kind of approach industry leaders to basically ask them, okay, you know what's kind of, what's going to come up in the next five to ten years? What do kids need to know? And then because they're the ones selling the stuff and producing uh, things, then 
they're kind of best in the know, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit of an odd system as well, isn't it? Because you kind of want everyone to have a fair education and access. Yeah, to ev everyone should have access to education, and pri privatization is probably going to cost much more than most people can afford. Yeah, especially in, yeah in a recession, that's a it's a bit of a risky move. Um, mm. It's bit, it's going to be a bit of a hard pill to swallow. Uh, reforms. Friends Richter, leader of the PFJP. Oh yeah, we were kind of kind of allying with them a little bit. Recently outlined their demands for the reform package. He declared that without the implementation of term limits and limited decrees, it would be very difficult for him and his party to stand behind the reform package. Right. And here we are over in Narval, waking up after a nice breakfast. Yeah, today's actions. Today's action. I arrived at the meeting room for my talk with Kyra and Pascal. Before beginning, I took a moment to appreciate the view from the balcony. The mountains of Narval were completely covered with snow. I was mesmerized by the scenery. Pascal Benewal walked up to me. Is he the guy? The Zorch government official. He acts as the Minister, the Minister of, Health. of Health, Social Affairs and Labour. Right. Wow. My Minister of Health was ironically somewhat portly, <laughs> having gained a few pounds since his breakthrough as a best selling writer. Okay. But his authority on social affairs could not be questioned. Such a spectacular... Should, should, should I do this one? Yeah, you can do that one, yeah. Such a spectacular view. <laughs> oh, yeah, you make him sound like a fucking freak. <laughs> he might be, we don't, know. we don't know. He could be, yeah. Yeah, and this is the Minister of Education. Yeah, okay. Joined us on the balcony dressed in sky blue pantsuits. Okay. Her preference for trousers over dresses had made her the subject of much palace gossip, but it didn't seem to bother her in the slightest. Neither should it. Spectacular indeed, but if you look at the opposite direction, you will see that Seoul's decades of neglect did to the city. Yeah, most of the people living in Narbel are workers, farmers, and their wives and children. They're breaking their backs close to no pay, all thanks to greedy corporations. Hmm. Um. One, three. Uh, three is a bit heartless. But, yeah, you know, it, but, but it is also the truth. Uh, so, so is one. I think because because if there is no one working, the country's going to grind to a halt. That's true. I mean, one one is definitely. Yeah, it is it is more and more of a the people choice. Yeah. I'm glad we see eye to eye on the issue. If you look past the view, you can see the real problems. Real problems like poverty. Pascal nodded gravely. This was a subject he knew quite a bit about himself. His best known books were about the plight of Swordland's less fortunate drawing from his own past growing up in squalor. Oh dear. Well put, Miss Waller. I don't need to tell you about my own experience of poverty. And you've been through similar hardship yourself, Mr. President. Uh yeah. True, but some lives are more difficult than others, like ours was, and still for hundreds of thousands in Swordland. You don't have to have to. Well, you don't have to have been born poor to sympathise with the plight of the impoverished. That's right. Much as you don't have to have been born a woman to recognise Swordland needs. For parity amongst the sexes, yeah, okay. Parity among the sexes shouldn't be our first priority. Look at how many high ranking female politicians our country has. 
Appearances can be deceiving, Pascal. Okay. Her voice sounded bitter. Think about how Lilius Graf got to her current position. I don't necessarily believe the rumours about her and Sol, but she never could have risen so high if she didn't parrot his cause. Gloria Tory is an accident that the first female assembly speaker is such a staunch conservative. That's funny because Gloria Tory, of course, does she look like Ma Margaret Thatcher? Not overly, but no, I think Lilith Graf was the Margaret Thatcher one. Yeah, but it's funny how they called her Tory and then conservative. So it's oh, oh. yeah. And then there was Afonso's habit of promoting women to prominent positions to give Swordland a progressive sheen while accomplishing nothing in reality. While women in places like Narbel are denied any opportunity to advance, the government can use a handful of female politicians from wealthy families, myself included, to pretend their only obstacle to success is their own lack of initiative. Meanwhile, those of us who don't use our clout to help powerful men stay in power are degenerated as angry spinsters. I ask you, Mr. President, does anyone care that your strategist, Mr. Gallade, doesn't have a wife? Ah, oh, he's gay. <laughs> he's probably gay. Right. Uh, <laughs> he might, he looks a bit, you know, Think so? Maybe. You give him in the eye, that's what it is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so I've been wondering about that. Actually, leave Lucian out of this. You veered off topic. And I agree with you completely. So those women deserve better. I would say they deserve better. Yeah, but at the same time, we're not here to necessarily talk about the plight of women. We're here to talk about economics. Yeah, but also we shouldn't. We should kind of keep our uh, advisors happy as well. So I don't think you can keep anyone, everyone happy. Um, no, but I mean, we could at least show her with uh, response number four that it is on our mind, kind of showing her that yeah, I'm I'm not forgetting about women either, but. but do have bigger problems on hand right now. That's true, but the thing is, if we acknowledge it, the, yeah, the game can be quite linear, right? So, yeah, not to meta it too much, but if we say, I agree with you, and then we pick this guy's action, she'll probably be offended. <laughs> so we're either going number three or four, then? I think th three is probably the safer option. All right, let's go with that one. Okay. Mr. Benevol asked and I answered. Okay, well, I think that was probably a safe thing to... Okay. As I was saying, isn't it about time Whole Sword addressed this country's real issues rather than bowing to the wishes of the Hawks and the fear mongers in the establishment and diverting yet more resources to the military and law enforcement? Our welfare, healthcare and education systems have been decaying since the recession. Swordland's poorer communities are losing hope. Oh dear. Hopelessness and lack of opportunities can drive people to extreme solutions. We're seeing increased crime, domestic violence, and yes, rising inequality between men and women. Hmm. Hmm. Even, num even number one sounds quite ridiculous if crime keeps going up and we've got people being gunned down in the streets. So I'm not going to pick number one. Uh, okay, so let's see. Lilith Graf will take care of crime. She's an expert on subject. To those issues must be tackled from different directions. That is true. We need to engage it holistically. Huh? Right, we're supposed to... Go, okay, well, here, have some herbs. Put them in your... pillow at night. Let them eat cake, I think is yeah. probably... <laughs> Uh, yeah. If only we could stop the recession, create jobs and growth, and the capital must be prioritized towards the resources that matter the most. 
What do you reckon? Number three? Number, number three and four are kind of the same in a way. As, oh, sorry, no. two and four. Yeah. So let's let's go for three. Yeah, we need to stop that <laughs> to stop that recession. The economic situation does play a huge role in living standards. Our urban and rural disparities are stark, and the recession hit the weakest harder. We can't fix the economy by ourselves. We have to educate the people and let them create new opportunities too. That's correct. Hmm? There is another subject I want to mention. I have been working on improving the rights of workers in our country, and have proposed a drafted bill that is currently being reviewed by our party. Right. Mr. Clavin has already backed me and given his support. Sortland has fallen behind most countries on this subject, and it is my responsibility to ensure that is not the case. Uh, okay, so I agree we need to improve the standards for our workers. There is always room for improvement, and it's good to hear that you are pushing for it. We shouldn't upset the businesses who are already struggling to stay afloat with the crisis. Sounds like a costly bill for such a low price. Okay, so not number four. Um, I will... Hmm. Setting the businesses... If we got workers, that will most likely take care of itself. So I would say either number one or two, but I'm leaning towards number one. I was I was more leaning towards number two because we're acknowledging it, but we're not promising anything. Well, number one isn't a promise either. It's just that yeah, it yes, we need we, we, we need to improve. Yeah, it's it's, it's a commitment. I think number two is again the the politicians, politicians' way. <laughs> so you mean number one and two are basically pointing in the same direction? Just number two is more. It's more neutral, right? And besides, he's already saying he's got the support of. Uh, uh, of this guy. So it's just kind of like okay, well you got his support. You know, and by default we you know, in theory. Yeah, because we haven't even read the read the bill yet, so that is true. Yeah, so we'll yeah, okay, it. number two. Yeah, appreciate the kind words, Mr. President. I will not let you down. Okay. It also is a matter of life and death. Every decade, we hear of some horrific accident due to employers' disregard for their workers' safety. So. Would you back the bill when it arrives on your desk? Uh, oh, I need to read it. Yeah, after, yeah, exactly. After we read it. Uh, okay, so I would be very interested in supporting it once it is finished. To make a decision, I would need to evaluate the contents in detail. Yes. Hmm. I don't think this is time for such a change. We have big issues. Yeah, number two, definitely. Understandable. You will receive all the sections in an outline. It's getting a little cold out here. Let's head inside and continue our discussions. We headed back inside. The meeting room was already prepared for state businesses. Uh, small gifts for each of us had been placed on the table by the municipality. We, look, we took our seats. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's go from top to bottom. Okay. Yeah, this is the choice. As you wish, Mr. President. Okay. On you go. Sodom has a free healthcare system, except for a few private hospitals operating under it. Most of the populace receives an adequate treatment. Health issues primarily appear in rural areas due to a lack of quality services. I am doing my best to ensure that citizens of all ages receive the best healthcare they can. I also personally want to solve the high infant and maternal mortality problem. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, What's the life expectancy? <laughs> yeah, we kind of need to know the basics first. Our life expectancy is 64, 65 years, and the infant mortality rate is a worryingly 85 per 1,000 births. 
but our maternal mortality is a 90. Christ, that's almost like, that's wow. like, yeah, 8.5% infant mortality. That's insane. Wow. And maternal mortality is at 9%. No, even more. Per thousand. 90%. Okay, yeah, not yet. Yeah, 9%. 9%. As you say. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Be assured that we are doing everything we can to save mothers and their newborn. Those numbers are saddening indeed. Uh, <laughs> uh, I agree we must do everything we can. I expect nothing but your best efforts to improve the situation. Well, we are the government, so it's not necessarily his responsibility. Well, he is in he charge. Is, he, of, he is the minister, uh, but I mean, at the same time, health, it's, health it's and put, stuff like that. Putting it all on him. Yeah, without the help of the government, uh, there's only so much he can do. Yeah. We are working very hard on improving the quality for the services. Yeah. Uh, how many hospital beds? It's probably going to be like. We've got two uh, I would beds, probably but... <laughs> say doctors and nurses are probably more important than how many beds there are. Well, we, I mean, we can come back to, to it, but yeah, let's have a look. There are 10 beds per 10. ten oh. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay. this is a very good number to according to our comparisons <laughs> with other neighbors. Fucking hell. That's one in a thousand. One bed for a thousand people. Uh, but the thing is, uh, well, uh, yeah, but th not all those a thousand people will be sick at one time, and not all of them will need a hospital bed. But um, no, but I mean, you got to take into consideration like sickness, and in this case, childbirth. Yeah, I mean, it, it is pretty shit. <laughs> so there's a lot of reasons that might uh, for force you to <laughs> seek a hospital. Yeah. And a one per ten thousand. Jesus. Okay, so we see a lower number in the countries of Agnolia and Whalen, but obviously can't match Lesbia or Valexland. Agnolia and Whalen are hardly countries to take as a standard, but it's good to know we aren't in a huge health crisis yet. Right, how many doctors and nurses? Do you want to take take your bets, Tara? Take your bets. How many doctors and nurses do we have per one thousand population? Per one thousand, uh, half, half a nurse I, and I'm I'm gonna <laughs> guess not much, not many. So I would say probably two doctors and six nurses per thousand. Okay. We have 31,594 doctors and 73,680 nurses. I mean, that's, that's a fair, fairly high ratio for nurses to doctors. This is a high number, what I think it is. I don't want to be rude, but out of those numbers, how many are in urban and rural areas? <clears throat> yeah, that's a good point. The data shows that per 10,000 people in urban areas, there are about 11 doctors, but in rural areas, there were only three. Okay, so I was pretty close to two doctors per, th per 10,000. Yeah. <laughs> Treatment time is still too high due to the low number of doctors in rural areas, which get barely any proper coverage. Thank you, Pascal. Your death briefing is much appreciated. Right. I want to hear about the education system. Yes, that is very important. With pleasure. Swordish education is free, but we have a very outdated system that I want to reform. The only important issue is the lack of access to education in rural areas, especially for the young girls. Your administration has the power to solve both problems. My highest priority is to get enough funding to be able to build schools in rural areas while I cleanse our education system of its nationalistic and indoctrina indoctrination and sexist teachings. I'm not quite sure if I like her 
choice of words of cleanse. Exactly. That's that's <laughs> he's a radical. But I do agree with uh, getting rid of nationalist indoctrination and sex teaching. Definitely. Well, let's have a look at the literacy rate. Let's let's go. Yeah. The literacy rate of Swordland is at eighty percent. This is a not very bad, good indicator bad. of future growth, but it needs to increase. It's also far lower among girls and boys. Not good. If I remember correctly, the most illiterate areas are Berger and Angle. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Although Lackhaven skews the statistics for the Nargis region, which also has a vast number of illiterate citizens. This underlines my point about the lack of access to education. How many teachers and students do we have? Currently, there are about 5 million students, 3 million in primary, and 1 million in secondary, and 1 million in tertiary. There are 155,000 teachers. Right, okay. So, 5 million. Let's work. Okay, so, oh my god, so you've got like a, a class size of about 50, right? What's the math on that? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing. <laughs> trying to do math as well, but that's never been my strong suit. It's divided and I don't, by. I don't have a calculator. 1,500 and. 32. Okay, well, that's not so bad. Th 32 students per, per teacher. teacher. I mean, it's kind of high, but it's, it's not creaking under the weight. No. No, that is true. Swordland is full of young and bright minds. We, we should keep striving to make education available for all. Yes, but it's still got full of potential. But, I mean, this this is the choice, man. We're going to have to choose between... One. Okay. I think there needs to be a change in the way of thought... We should help children to question and educate themselves. Okay, well that's that's a noble thing, but the thing is... Okay, tell me about the difference between urban and rural education. Let's go. Urban areas have three times the number of schools per 10,000 people compared to rural areas. Rural areas also suffer from a lack of teachers. Yeah. <clears throat> Salaries for teachers are very low here. We need to increase their pay to give them more incentive. Right. I can fill in the blanks from here. Kyra stood up and moved towards the window. She took a deep breath. What is it, Kyra? Uh, yeah. Shall we ask? Yeah. Okay. Well, we are we are a caring person, right? Yeah. Look at this impoverished city. The streets full of potholes, the hospital barely functioning, the school half open. This is not just about Seoul, or even Alfonso failing. This decay in Swordland's forgotten regions has been going on for many decades due to structural corruption, which is fueled by capitalism. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, okay. So she's a commie. <laughs> she, she does seem to have some communist values. Yes. She does. Um, let's not go. Let's not get into an ideological debate. Yeah. To focus on the issues. We, yeah. We need. We need to keep a clear focus on the target. One cannot be separated from the other, Mr. Rain. The issues stem. Oh, she's called me Mr. Rain. She's shown me disrespect. Uh, no, she's calling you Mr. Rain. Not Mr. President. Exactly. But she's, still, but she's still using Mr. No, yeah, but I'm the president. You don't, yeah, I mean, you call me Mr. President. You don't call me Mr. Rain. Call me Mr. President. Call me Mr. Rain. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, just had to. One way or another, we need to transform. Greed and unchecked capitalism will not magically provide for the people. We need to transform our robot. Um... I'm I'm swaying t towards Pascal over here. I think the health of the people, at least we can give them that. Um, and capitalism ha has been shown to to be better workings than say 
communism a lot, that comes to yeah, a lot of other unless you're in China, you know. But I don't know. Do so you... so I'm I'm guessing we have to choose here between either healthcare or education. Yes. And education is always gonna be more important. What? <laughs> well, well if, if, you, if you don't have educated yes, workforce that's true but at the same time I don't I don't necessarily like the way she's going about it you know she's she's very anti-capitalistic and you know and we, we were warned we were kind of warned at the beginning that you know that you know the, the other country was it like Lesbia or whatever it's called yeah, you know, they they privatized schools and then they improved, and we needed to get away from state-funded education because it wasn't necessarily working. Um, well, what what we need to get rid of was the uh, ideological indoctrination. That's that. Well, yeah, exactly. But she's she's she seems very private, really private school, herself. Private pri uh, private schools without oversight is in my in my mind. A good breeding ground for under uh, for kind of under undercover indoctrination. Okay. So who are we gonna who are we gonna hear for, for from first? Uh... Hmm. Well, since we're probably gonna be able to hear from both, I hope. Yeah. So this is pre hopefully pretty much a summary of what they're saying. Yes. So. Let's, let's, let's just go from top to bottom. Okay, ladies first, right. Tell me more about your plans. My plans require an increase in the government budget. I aim to solve the problems we highlighted with the allocated money. Thing, This is the thing though, like, you know, the, 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 there's potholes on the road and stuff. You could chuck all the money you can into uh, schools. But if the kids can't get to school because the roads are shit, well, the thing is that potholes, they're always going to come back. But with yeah. a stable education, uh, I don't know. By building schools in these less fortunate rural areas and through fundamental changes in the education system, I will unlock the potential of all our children, boys and girls alike. That's the thing, though. Like, yeah, you got an 8%, 8.5% mortality rate. <laughs> like, that's pretty fucking high. One in 10 almost people will, will die before the age of five like that's that's insane um okay improving the situation in rural areas is indeed a good idea our election mandate was to improve education we'll deliver on this that is a definite yes we will do this mm. interesting I thought we had a quality of service problem. This is sort of education lacking in quality. That seems like a good thing to ask. Yeah, I think so too. Our statistics show the disparity between urban and rural education. We can either do something about it or wait until things get worse. Uh, okay. Wouldn't the promotion of private education help create additional funds? Yes, but at what cost? I'm not a supporter of the private sector in education because at the end of the day, they are focused on profit first. Well, you can't argue with her. Uh, what is he working on? I personally want to improve the low quality of health cares in the rural areas. So, I created draft plans to increase the salary of doctors and to upgrade the equipment of the hospitals. I can do more with an increased budget. Additionally, a privatization plan to promote private investments in the healthcare system could allocate extra funds. Uh, okay, he wants to, no, he, okay, he wants to privatize the fucking health system. <laughs> oh, I don't ever like that. That's even worse than privatizing schools. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so isn't access to healthcare in rural areas an issue? Quality of healthcare is in less fortunate areas matters more. Um, okay, so either we focus on access or quality. I take it. 
mean, because people have access. If you've got two doctors for every, you know, two nurses for every one doctor, it's not necessarily that that bad of an access problem. Yeah, and I think quality of healthcare is what's needed to get mortality rates down. Yeah. Exactly. It would directly diminish the depressingly high infant and maternal mortality situation. Besides, the push would also have an economic benefits. I do hope to create competition and increase the quality of healthcare with the privatization effort. Ah, a private healthcare system would increase the price of treatment mm -hmm. and make access worse for the average citizen. That's right. Yes, Decision just not to promote. States. Yeah, more state control would cost the people dearly. My expectation from our government is that we understand and focus on the needs of the people. Um, <sighs> the representatives of our people, and we will prioritize their needs. There are other significant issues that we need to focus on, like security. I appreciate your briefing and plans. We will reconvene at the budget meeting. I think that's the best thing to do. <sighs> well, we are elected representatives. Well, you know, they, they said they said their piece, and... And, it, and... and if we don't go for the people, I'm pretty sure that the riots and everything like that is just going to get worse. Yeah. Because now there's problem, because there is a risk that we might be seeing protests and riots because no healthcare, no education. Yeah. So either one, I would say either one or three. I'm going to go three. It was a pleasure. See you at the meeting. I hope to see a change in direction, okay? I think we covered all the necessary subjects. Thank you for your time. I hope we won't repeat the same mistakes again and again. Have a good say, have a good day, Mr. President. All right. Okay, Minister's so she left. went back, Mr. President, at least. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, the ministers left, and I attended other official business in the city. The weather was relatively cold, but it didn't keep a group of USP supporters from coming out to cheer at us in the streets. Just by looking at the citizens' attire, it was easy to understand the current state of Narble. Some people were wearing clothes a few sizes too too large. Some kids did not even have shoes. Oh, Jesus. Yet there was hope in their eyes. They were excited to see their president in their city. And... Okay. Well, I think we've rabbited on for this one. We haven't made any key decisions, but I do know that we need to do dinner. And it's not good to uh, decide on the fate of a country when we're hungry, right? No, that is true. And I, I've also learned, or I should say my wallet has learned, that it's never good to go shopping when you're hungry either. That's true. Because my, cause my last food bill. Wow. <laughs> well, that was part 10. It's good to be back, though. Hey, Terra. It is. It is. Even though we can't remember half of what we've done up, up until this point. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, so I, I kind of think maybe we should rewatch a few of the videos and try and catch up again. I think I think I have to. Yeah, I think I think we shall. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm I looking forward to getting back into this one and, and seeing what uh, happens. I mean, we were still on chapter one. Uh, and from what I think, I think there's four or five chapters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, we could be at this still in two years. We don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I guess we shall. But for now, ladies and gents, it's going to be goodbye from me and, and from me. <laughs> there we go. See you next time, ladies and gents. Ciao for now. Bye, people.